Okay, I want to see if I can quickly respond here to Rocking Mr. E put up a video that I really did not like at all called Attack of the Relativists. And I, I guess I really didn't like this video. Um, I think the main reason was, from my own perspective, just really, really simplifying and reducing the complexity of science and mathematics and of human thought and reducing it to a very false dichotomy of objective truth or relativism. I mean, I, I don't subscribe to either of those. I think both of those are problematic terms that are somewhat outworn. And the number of contradictions that I found within Rocking Mr. E's video sort of motivated me to want to say some things here. Okay, the first thing is, is I, I don't think, as I said, I don't think that it's objectively true that there are just these two things called objective truth and then relativism. I think that's very dubious. I think that's very, very questionable. I don't think there's any science to make that claim. I think, if anything, you find a whole range of different orientations and different kinds of methodologies that we use to help us know and make claims about knowledge in the world. And many of those are, they're context dependent, and sometimes that context is a kind of mind dependence, but none of that means that it's relative, I, I guess, but none of that means that it's objective, if, if by that we mean independent of observers. Um, there's so many simple examples. I mean, one very simple example, and this would be for Rock and Mr. E. I mean, if I go outside and it's raining or it's a little drizzly and light's breaking through and I see a rainbow in the sky. Now, is the rainbow there independent of observers? See, I think if you're going to say that it is, you're not based in science, right? That one of the things that contemporary science shows us is that rainbows depend upon certain conditions and one of the conditions of rainbows is an observer at a certain angle of incident. That is, we have to have a certain angle and it's the conspiring of the moisture, the sun, the perspective, the distance, and then the observer. You can't remove any one of them and still have the rainbow. I think we think that if you remove the observer, the rainbow is still there, but it, it really isn't. Any more than if you remove the moisture, is the rainbow still there? Well, no, it's not. One of the essential parts of the rainbow is gone, and observers are part of that. So just from your example, are rainbows there objectively independent of observers? Now, does that mean that rainbows are relative? No, that's not the right word to use at all. How about if there's me and you, and we're outside, and we're, we're looking at the rainbow? Are there, if we both look at the rainbow and we see just one rainbow, are we both looking at the same rainbow scientifically? And I'm not arguing for what you're, I think, going to call solipsism or subjectivism. No, the fact is that we can scientifically demonstrate that there are two different um, rainbows being observed. That is, there are many different rainbows in the sky as there are people looking at it, and the positionality of the rainbow, in fact, is different depending upon who's looking from what vantage. I mean, that's sort of why a rainbow recedes when you move toward it. That doesn't mean that we're making rainbows up. It means that modern science has to be able to accommodate for the observer. Now, the things that I found most problematic about your video, in addition to the ridiculous, and, I, and I, I am, I'm sorry to call it ridiculous, but it's a ridiculous sophomoric move to try to reduce reality to either being, you know, comprised of things that are objectively true or a bunch of subjective kind of relativism. I think it's just a, it's a false dichotomy. It polarizes people and debate. It makes people positioned on one side or the other, and it really doesn't help accomplish a kind of nuanced understanding of ourselves or of our world. But let's move to some of the problems. Okay, so you say that you're more interested in science and what science can do. Now, from your opinion, or from your, from your objective truth, I mean, I don't know what position we're going to call this, is math. Okay, you went to calculus and the Archimedes example. Now, again, I would have went to Leibniz and Newton, but Archimedes, again, is somewhat questionable. But now, math. Is math scientifically tested? Do we, did we scientifically test and scientifically discover the calculus? Or is math a deductive system which can't be scientifically tested and which science defers to? 
See, I think math is a language. It's deductive rather than inductive. And the fact that you suggest that you're advocating a scientific orientation, but then your main example is basically a math example, it's kind of odd. Math isn't conscious, independent reality. It's not mind-independent reality there. What you're dealing with is one of the greatest inventions of the human mind. Now, is there a mathematical order there in the world? Well, it is to the extent that we say so, but even there it's problematic. Is it a base 10? What kind of number system are you going to use? See, I think you're making it. When you give the 2 plus 2 equals 4 stuff, you're moving out of a certain kind of mathematical language. I think you think math is math. You don't realize that there are mathematics. There are plurals. There are different forms of geometry. Right? I mean, there wasn't just Euclidean geometry. We have Lobachevsky and Reinman who've developed internally consistent geometries that are a little, you know, the inner sum of the angles are a little bit above and a little bit below 180. It gets pretty complicated. Right? Um, you suggest in your video that that play and can you go to Plato with the notion of the good, the beautiful, and the just? Okay, now if you're going to go to Plato, Plato is interested in the good, and the beautiful, and the just, and the truth about those, right? Is there an objective truth about the good, the beautiful, and the just? I think there you're starting to get into these issues of cultural relativity. The problem is that in the contemporary world, in the modern world, a world of plurality, a world of different traditions and different cultures. I mean, for the Greeks, barbarian was the word they used for the other because it went bar, 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 bar. That was the sound that they thought people who didn't speak Greek made. And the other, the non iteration, was not respected as an equal. Some of the identity politics about people being excluded from certain forms of discourse is what a lot of this is about because the good, the beautiful, and the just when people thought that there was intrinsically an objective truth about the good, the beautiful, and the just, many people revolted against that and said, I disagree with what you think justice is. The question of objective truth regarding justice is part of the haggle. Uh, also regarding the good and the beautiful. We could go to those. But why don't you if you really do believe that there is this objective truth, why don't you tell us what is objectively true regarding the good, the beautiful, and the just? Lay it all out for us. I think if you could, I mean, that would be a good start. My guess is you're going to get a lot of people who say, well, no, I, I disagree with that. Now, are they wrong? Are they relativists? Do they have a different objective truth? Who is it who gets access to say what the objective truth is? And this is you know, partly why I really disagreed with you know, your ending of your video. You, you suggest that why would anyone want a relativist position when they have objective truth? It's sort of what you're saying. And then you bring up fundamentalist Christian right? No, these are people who believe in an objective truth. Unmistakable truth. Now you're going to say, "Well, no, it's not. Uh, it's not testable by science." Yeah, either is ma mathematics. The, the number of contradictions in your video was was really kind of alarming. I, I think that you, I, I, it was odd. I mean, wh why say that relativists are interested in a sort of power move and they're denying truth to gain power or as a power play? No. If that's an all true, and I'm not trying to defend the position, I, I would try to defend the argument that it's a false dichotomy, and it's really not very sophisticated. It's introducing kind of either-or argumentation that's really, really simplistic and problematic, but to, to suggest that the people who you're calling relativists are doing for a power move, I think it's just, it's just wrong. It's just really naive. No, the point is that there are many people who are engaged in trying to challenge the dominant status quo regarding what the objective truths are because those people who claim to have the ob objective truth often do so for power purposes. It's often religious groups that claim an objective truth or moral groups that claim an objective morality and they do so for power reasons. See, I, I think it would be hard for me to get how you're saying that truth isn't just as much used for power as relativism is used for power. I mean, it's sort of an odd conclusion that you had in your video. I hope that other people who saw Rocking Mr. E's video really are not seduced by this kind of logic. There are more 
uh, ways of knowing and coming to know the world in predictable ways than to try to appeal to this expression, objective truth or relativism. Those are expressions, they're noises that come out of your mouth. And the meaning of them really varies depending upon whether or not you're in religious context, in scientific context, in cultural context, in interpersonal or personal context. The, the meaning really does change. And that's not to offer a relativist position. That, again, is too coarse of a grade. This is a person who has a comb with only two teeth in it, and they're not really splitting the hairs in the way that they need to be separated out.